What's up? Peter Glyco here, aka XVG Well, aka XVG Well Real, and I am making this video for the HIV and AIDS community, and I'm going to discuss the medications I'm on and my experiences with them uh, and some of my advice, and I'm specifically going to be talking about uh, prescription medications in this video. There's a few supplements I'm going to, I'm going to talk about. I, I own hundreds of supplements. I just bought two bookshelves to put them all on. Uh, and that's a totally different story. My doctor just recommends taking a multivitamin. Uh, and uh, first off, this is not medical advice. Talk to your doctor about any medication or any supplement before you take it, uh, especially since there are many interactions between certain supplements uh, and uh, the, the antiretroviral medications. So I'm going to talk about the my story a little bit. I've told my story in another video, uh, and I am AIDS patient, uh, which is uh, late stage HIV, and I was diagnosed in the latest stages of AIDS. I had nearly uh, 1 million uh, viral count per milliliter. Uh, after my first month on Victarvi, I was able to get down to almost undetectable 160 from 820,000 uh, viral count. I'm going to talk about my experience with Victarvi uh, from the start until now. Uh, at my first, at my diagnosis, my T cell count was only five. Uh, your T-cell count for a healthy person be, should be between 500 and 1,600 uh, is really where you want it to be. And my T-cell uh, CD4 count was five uh, single digits, uh, which was basically if I hadn't uh, gotten diagnosed any sooner, uh, any later, I uh, could have died and Frankly, I'm still not quite out of the danger zone yet. I just got my blood drawn yesterday to see what my current CD4 levels are uh, at my previous uh, appointment uh, and hospital visit about a month ago. My uh, levels went up from 5 to 21. Uh, the threshold for AIDS, the difference between uh, simply having HIV and having AIDS uh, there's a slight subjectiveness to it, uh, but the main threshold is whether your CD4 count is below 200 or not. And not only was my CD4 count below 200, but it was uh, at 5. Uh, so people watching this video, if you are recently diagnosed with HIV and uh, you are in the first few years or first months of uh contracting HIV, uh, I want to assure you uh, that your prognosis and outlook is very good. Uh, and for AIDS patients, uh, it is much better outlook and prognosis than it once was. And I'm honestly confident that there will be a complete cure uh, within 10 years and even within the past 10 uh, in five years, there's been tremendous advancements uh, in the treatments and medications available for HIV and AIDS. And again, AIDS is just HIV. It's just more advanced stages of uh, HIV. Uh, typically, uh, HIV turns into AIDS uh, after six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, years of having HIV untreated, uh, that is when uh, HIV becomes AIDS. So if you're diagnosed with HIV, uh, do, not, do not worry. You can still have healthy immune systems uh, and you can live a normal lifespan. Uh, you just got to keep taking your medications. Uh, so I want to talk about my medications, what they started me on, uh, what I'm on now, and uh, what uh, I, yeah. So uh, what they started me on, uh, and what I'm still on is Victarvi, and that is the antiretroviral, and that is a one a day. 
and that is in the art ART family of antiretrovirals uh, which are the main uh, treatment for HIV and AIDS and it is very 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 important to take these medications uh, every day uh, as prescribed uh, and there's been a lot of improvements uh, there is uh, three main ingredients that's what art stands for is the three different things there's the I can't pronounce any of these but uh, 10 to 4 for example uh, just in 2012, they uh, uh, found a new formulation of it uh, that is safer. I'm going to explain some more of that uh, because once you have uh, AIDS, uh, like I said, my viral count went from 820 copies of the HIV virus per milliliter of blood when I was diagnosed to 160 copies of the HIV virus per milliliter of blood uh, at my last count and I'm hoping that my blood draw tomorrow will show even lower numbers. Uh, below 50 is undetectable, uh, 160 is basically already undetectable. Uh, so my risk right now is not really the HIV virus, it is uh, getting my CD4 counts back to a safe level. Uh, they call it autoimmune de uh, deficiency when your CD4 count is below 200 because without uh, antibiotics and antifungals and all that sort of thing, uh, your immune system cannot defend itself. Uh, and so there is nearly a 99.9% .9 cure for the virus itself so if you're diagnosed in the first six months, two years, three years of having HIV, uh, and even if your viral count uh, was a million or more, the way it works is uh, in the first few years of HIV, uh, your viral count can reach over one million and then it will go back down. And then uh, about 10 years later, it'll start going back up. Uh, and uh, during that time, your CD4 levels will be decreasing. But if even if so, if you're diagnosed uh, within the first two years of contracting HIV and you have over a one million uh, HIV viral count, uh, but you're still within your first two years and you still have over a 200 CD4 count, don't worry about it because the uh, antiretrovirals will uh, get your viral counts back down and. Uh, the HIV virus hasn't killed off all your CD4 cells yet, uh, so you're still safe. Uh, I I should have gotten diagnosed way before. Part of it's my fault for not being more proactive. Uh, I, I had a misunderstanding where I thought there was numerous times where I, I assumed that that was part of blood work, uh, that I've had blood work done in the past for different reasons, and I assumed they tested for HIV uh, during those circumstances. So that's why I believed for uh, nearly a decade that I was HIV negative when I indeed was not. And even uh, this past year when I continually had health issues, uh, the even when I went to the ER around this time last year, no one suggested that I should get tested for HIV uh, until much later on, uh, until I was diagnosed just over two months ago. But uh, in this video, I want to talk about this medication, Victarvi, and uh, my experience with it. And what is important to know about Victarvi and also the late stages of AIDS, uh, if you're untreated, is those that first months and those first few weeks of being on the medication and also those months leading up to a single digit CD4 count or a below 100 CD4 count uh, is going to be much more difficult uh, than uh, in, the, in the first months after starting the treatment are going to be much more difficult than what it will be in the future. So if you are recently diagnosed and you feel horrible uh, and you feel you're worried about dying or think you're going to feel that way for the rest of your life, uh, your outlook is actually pretty good if you continue uh, with self-care, 
uh, good nutrition and stay on your medications, especially your antiretroviral. The antiretroviral can get uh, those, it can virtually eliminate the virus. The problem is producing more CD4 cells. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, the body, uh, the, the older you get, the less CD, new CD4 cells your body produces. So if you're young and you're diagnosed with AIDS, uh, if you start your treatment uh, and get through those first months of treatment, uh, your outlook is actually pretty good and you'll be able to continue to regenerate uh, more CD4 cells. And I'm going to talk about in future videos, uh, supplements and nutrition uh, that can help uh, with uh, your body uh, growing more CD4 cells for AIDS patients specifically, especially late stage AIDS patients. Uh, you really have to focus on high protein and high calorie intake. Uh, that's the most important thing. Uh, when I first started on Victarvi, uh, they also started me on this, which is Bactrim. I'm going to talk about the Bactrim in a little bit. Uh, that is a uh, antibiotic, uh, but I had very, very, very uh, severe reactions to both the Victarvi and to the Bactrim. Uh, and the first few weeks of uh, my treatment. And if you're currently in that stage, uh, you might feel uh, very near death uh, and you might feel like you are unable to continue. Uh, but I want to assure you that the it takes a while for your body to get acclimated to the medications and I do not have the side effects that I had from the Victarvi. Uh, and honestly, I think a lot of the side effects were from the Bactrim. And I'll talk about that more later. They switched me from Bactrim uh, to a different combination uh, that is better for me. Uh, but uh, Bactrim might be better for you. Uh, I'll explain that. But the point is, is the first few weeks of starting your medication, it is extremely it, it will be extremely difficult for your body to get acclimated to the medications. Uh, and if you do think you are having a severe reaction, you may need to go to the ER. And at your doctor's appointments, they should be checking your liver enzyme levels and that sort of thing. I'm going to talk about that more when I get to talk about the Bactrim uh, to make sure there isn't a, a need to switch medications. However, uh, it is to be expected, especially if you have a very low CD4 count and very high viral count at your diagnosis, and especially for AIDS patients. Again, I understand HIV patients in the first few years uh, when your viral load is still high, it might be an unpleasant experience, but you still have your CD4 cells, you're going to be fine. Uh, you just got to get through it. But uh, for the AIDS patients, uh, I know you are probably more worried about dying in the short term because if you read information on the internet uh, in the 80s and 90s uh, and even up to a decade ago, uh, people with the type of diagnosis that I had uh, would have like a 40% chance of dying within a three year period of their diagnosis with a cell count like I had and a a viral count like I had and if I was in the 90s I'd probably be dead already uh, if it wasn't for the advancements in the medications uh, but uh, I want to assure you that the side effects uh, will uh, become less as time goes on uh, and there's two main side effects that I experienced that were frankly debilitating almost uh, uh, one was hives, and I do think the hives were from the Bactrim rather than the Bactarvi. Earlier in the year, before my diagnosis, I got hives from penicillin. And I'd taken penicillin in the past without having reactions to it, but it does seem now uh, that the certain antibiotics I do have a severe allergic reaction to. But starting out on the Bactarvi, uh, the other reaction that I experienced in the first few weeks and am not experiencing now and also might have been associated with my very low 
uh, CD4 counts, and also I was entering into the wasting stages of AIDS, uh, where I was my caloric and protein intake was not uh, as much as how much energy and protein my body was using. So my muscles were literally deteriorating, and I didn't wasn't aware I had HIV. So I was trying to exercise more, and in late stages of AIDS. Uh, after your diagnosis and after your cell count continues to go up and you put on some weight, then you can start exercising again. Uh, but prior to my diagnosis, I assumed that the way to, I had been sick for a long time and I thought maybe if I exercised more, uh, that would make me less sick. But I wasn't aware uh, that that actually is, what I needed then was rest, not exercise, because my body uh wasn't uh it needed more calories than i was able to consume uh basically uh and that's what if you read about aids wasting syndrome uh i was entering in that stage at my diagnosis uh but anyway what i want to talk about is the uh acid lack lacidosis or whatever Lactic acid buildup in your muscles is a common reaction when you first start BICTARV. Uh, and that can also have to do with the, uh, the wasting syndrome if you're in a late stage AIDS. Uh, is, uh, people that work out a lot know the, the feeling of lactic acid buildup after a really heavy workout, especially if you haven't worked out in a long time or if it's a really extreme workout, you'll have muscle pain, you'll have cramps and that sort of thing. Well, when you first start BICTAR-V, uh, you might have that, and if it's a very late diagnosis like mine was, or if you're exercising uh, more than your caloric intake uh, prior to diagnosis, uh, you're going to have a lot of lactic acid buildup, uh, and that will go away. Uh, that was a huge problem for me in the first few weeks, uh, first month. Uh, and during the worst of it, for a few days, there was a point where I could barely walk, uh, and I was worried about becoming sedentary, where I would not have been able to get out of bed and go to the bathroom myself and that sort of thing. I was only able to walk up like three stairs. We have stairs in the house, and I was unable to walk down the four stairs to get down to the basement where our laundry room is and all that sort of thing. But that only lasted a few days where my la uh, lactic acid was that severe. And now, as of right now, I'm not having any problems with lactic acid, and I'm not having any problem with hives. Uh, as far as the hives goes, uh, that could have been a side effect from the Bictarv. Uh, that went away for the most part. Uh, I still have some weird skin irritation sometimes, but it's really nothing that is serious or bothersome. Uh, one of the things they prescribed me that was helpful was hydroxine. Uh, uh, this label is faded for some reason, but hydroxine, uh, 25 milligrams, and they prescribed that both for uh, the allergic reaction that was causing the hives as well as anxiety. Uh, when I felt very, very frail and virtually felt like near death, sort of, I was like shortness of breath, uh, feeling like I could, with extreme la lactic acid buildup, I could barely. Uh, move I had extreme 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 fatigue uh, and I felt like I was getting worse and not better uh, that was uh, that was true for the months leading up to my diagnosis and for the few weeks after my diagnosis once I already started uh, the Victarvi it felt like I was getting sicker and I was not getting better uh, which of course is worrisome and the hydroxine helped both with anxiety and the allergic reaction uh, and what helped most with the hives for me uh, was collodial oatmeal which is just ground up oatmeal uh, in a bath soak rub that on your skin that seemed to be that seemed to work better than uh, I was using all sorts of uh, I forget the stuff used for poison ivy and shit like that. It helped a little bit, but not really. But it was like so bad that I wasn't able to sleep and stuff like that because it was stinging and it was a full body rash uh, and that sort of thing. And uh, I think a lot of that actually had to do with the Bactrim. And at my follow-up appointment, they uh, d did a blood draw 
and I had a liver enzyme issue that was caused by the Bactrim, which is a more rare uh, side effect of the Bactrim, uh, so don't be scared. If you're taking Bactrim, uh, it should be fine for you, but if you are having a severe reaction, you might be having a liver reaction like I had. Uh, so they took me off of the Bactrim. I was on like six Bactrim a day. Uh, and prior to my hospital stay, I had taken two more Bactrim because I started getting a fever. And I thought it was going to help with the fever, even though it's hurtful, harmful for my liver. But I think that was part of the reason that the train of events that caused me to go to the hospital. Because it was causing me har more harm than good, basically, at that point. And if I were continued with the, the Bactrim, I probably would have had liver failure or something like that. But that is a more rare side effect. And what they put me on instead is uh, Dapsone. And I take these daily, and I have no side effects from Dapsone. Uh, I take one of these a day. This is a general antibiotic. Uh, and if you are able to tolerate the... Uh, Bactrim, it is important to take it during these stages, even if you have some side effects. If it's not causing you uh, severe liver issues or something, this can prevent toxoplasmosis. Google toxoplasmosis. You do not want to have toxoplasmosis, uh, and you have a risk of toxoplasmosis, especially when you're below a 50 CD4 count. Uh, and I'm below 50 CD4 count, and this stuff would help me prevent getting toxoplasmosis, but I can't take it, uh, so I just need to be careful in other regards, and I'm on other antibiotics. Uh, another one for me uh, that was very important, uh, let me tell you also, when well, they took me off of the Bactrim, where is it? Uh, they, they've been, I've been doing azithromycin, uh, and it's two tablets once a week, and that is just a heavy-duty antibiotic. And the two of those are very helpful uh, in, without having Bactrim. Uh, these help because when your CD4 counts are below 200, especially when they're below 50, especially when they're below 10 or 20. Uh, you are very susceptible to uh, bacterial, fungal, viral, cancer, any type of uh, stuff because your immune system cells are all dead, basically. Uh, so, but they can be restored and there is hope. Uh, so, those medications work for me well. And what I can also say is when I first started taking both the Victor V and this stuff, I'm not sure which one was causing the nausea, but uh, I was unable to take it without throwing up, and I was unable to eat uh, when I first started taking it. Uh, the first two days of taking it, uh, I would end up just throwing up, and I was unable to hold down even water while taking the medication. And if you can't take your, if you can't take your Bictarvi, or if you can't take whatever antiretroviral you're on, and if you can't take your uh, antibiotic, like you'll you'll die. Like you need to take these uh, to survive if you're in the late stages of AIDS. Uh, and so it's very important. People that just have HIV, I hear people talking about having issues with adherence, not taking their meds every day, but they don't have to worry about fucking dying uh, if they have a CD4 count. Uh, above 200 uh, so and you shouldn't either even if your CD4 count is below 200 as long as you stay up with your nutrition and stay up with your medications but what saved me and what saved my life was a medication called Ondestron uh, I don't know the uh, the name for it but it is a heavy-duty anti-nausea medication uh, I'm a cannabis advocate, I've talked about this in other videos, but at that point in my life, uh, I was too frail for even, uh, th the cannabis would not have been enough alone, and I was too frail to, psychologically, I'm going to talk about that more, I think that had to do with the fungal infection, 
I tested negative for meningitis and cryptococcus, cryptococcus, but that's a different story. I'm going to talk about my antifungals next, but I needed a uh, anti-nausea pill in order to take uh, my antibiotics and take my Bictarvi, and that was vital, absolutely vital uh, for my survival, basically. Uh, was to be able to take those medications at those stages uh, of uh, the AIDS infection. So if you are having nausea when you first start your Victarvi uh, and first start your antibiotics, uh, get Ondestron. Now I'm having no nausea at all and I'm not taking Ondestron at all. And I did have, and I'm, I, I understand some of these medications do have uh, serious side effects, but the uh, the result of not taking them is outweighs the result of uh, the potential side effects from taking them. For example, I was getting muscle twitching uh, throughout my body, and I believe that was due to the Ondestron. But without the Ondestron, I would have been able to take my medications, and with the nausea, I wouldn't have been able to eat food and I would have just died. So it's like, you need you need to be able to do that stuff. So I at least had to temporarily take the Ondestron, and now I also take Metaclomoride, uh, which is not for nausea, but it's for appetite. Uh, at first I had a pretty good appetite on my own, and then eventually uh, it went away, and they prescribed this to me after I went to the hospital, and I delayed taking it at first because I read about the side effects, and a lot of the side effects were similar to the symptoms that I had be prior to going to the hospital. So I was afraid of taking this medication, but I've been taking this medication uh, for the past few weeks and it is, uh, I've been able to put on a lot more weight and this is crucial for my appetite and I'm not having any side effects from this medication uh, right now. And I think some of the side effects that I was experiencing with uh, both the antibiotics and the Bictarvi uh, and some of the other stuff with the Bictarvi, it's just a matter of time of acclimating to the medication. It's a few weeks or a month or so that uh, you're going to have the serious side effects. Uh, but once you get past it, uh, you'll be all right. Uh, but uh, I also think some of the stuff like the Ondestron and the possible side effects of the medical uh, pluramide, uh, known as Reglan, I think is the... Uh, name brand for it. Uh, you might be more susceptible to that when you're in a very frail state with their 5 10 T cells. And again, that is very, very rare for people to be diagnosed at that point where it's that that low of stuff. So I would worry less about the possible side effects than, uh, than not taking your medications because it you need to take your antivirals. You need to be able to eat you can't have nausea and at this point yeah uh you know uh cannabis type of stuff would probably be good uh for me for uh appetite and uh uh rest and uh anti-nausea and that sort of thing although i'm not experiencing nausea but i'm telling you when i was first diagnosed i was such in such a frail state uh that it was not necessarily I needed those medications basically uh, and the other uh, most important medication that they had me on uh, was Fluxanol. Uh, while I tested negative for cryptococcus and meningitis, I don't know, it could have been the wasting syndrome affecting my brain, but I am almost completely certain that it was fungal over overgrowth. I had severe thrush, and I believe it was affecting my brain uh, severely uh, and affecting the rest of my body. Uh, so this was by far the most effective. Prior to my diagnosis, I was prescribed Nysatin twice, uh, and it uh, alone was not able to get rid of my thrush, but that was before I knew I had AIDS and HIV. Uh, so that's probably why it didn't work as well. Uh, but immediately after my diagnosis, the Fluxanol got rid of my thrush right away. Uh, and now they got me back on my satin, 
but I'm telling you, this stuff works way better than nice satin does. Although nice satin is probably uh, good uh, for the long run. Uh, it has both antifungal and antibiotic properties. You swish it in your mouth, you swallow it, uh, and it uh, kills off thrush uh, and candida. And I think that candida overgrowth is, uh, was one of my main symptoms that was affecting me the most prior to my diagnosis. And uh, yeah, and uh, what candida and thrush is, is a yeast infection uh, in your mouth and in uh, your gut. And uh, it's the same as a vaginal yeast infection. And by the way, uh, if you have thrush, you can give a woman uh, a yeast infection uh, through that sort of intercourse or uh, likewise, if they have a yeast infection, they can give you thrush. Uh, but either way, whether you have HIV or AIDS or not, that's kind of important to know. Uh, and if you do have thrush, which is seeing a bunch of white stuff on your tongue, uh, right now mine is like that. That's actually not very good. Uh, it was completely gone when I first started taking the Fluxidol. Uh, and so I'm going to do some more of this. I should be taking this four times a day because I don't want to see any white at all on my tongue. I just let it till I want to tongue and I swallow it. It's good for the whole system, but this level of thrush is actually way better than where I was at. I was literally getting it on all of my gums uh, prior to my diagnosis. Like it was, there's thrush growing, like fungus growing on my gums, on the roof of my mouth, everywhere. Uh, and it was horrible. So uh, I'm going to ask for a refill of the Fluxanol because that works way better for me than the Nysatin does. Uh, and, uh, I'm going to keep using the nice satin as well. Uh, and, uh, oregano oil, I think is a good antifungal as well. Uh, I'm going to talk more about, uh, that stuff in other videos, but I wanted to talk more about medications in this video, but for late stage age patients, uh, at first diagnosis, you want to make sure you don't miss your antiviral stuff. If you have problems with nausea, you want to anti nausea thing. If you have problems with appetite, the most important thing you can do for regaining your T-cells and regaining your health is eating enough calories and eating enough protein. Uh, so you want to, uh, if you're having problems with appetite, I recommend Reglan. Uh, that helps me a lot. Uh, if cannabis helps you and you're able to tolerate it, uh, I'm telling you, cannabis advocates might be like, what are you talking about? Uh, cancer patients taking this stuff. I'm telling you that five T-cells in the, getting acclimated to that medication and whatever the fuck was going on with my, excuse my language, but whatever was going on uh, with the fungal stuff that was affecting me in the wasting syndrome, like, uh, the, I was, uh, like, not drinking water for 30 minutes or something like little things like that were fucking with me like on a level I can't even explain. Uh, it was like on a, my brain and body. And, uh, I feel like now, uh, cannabis based medicines would be good for me, but there's certain stages where you just need, uh, the actual other types of, uh, medications when you're in a very severe state of health. Uh, but yeah, so those are the antibiotics. But yeah, when you're first diagnosed with AIDS, it's really important to take the not only the antiretrovirals, but the antibiotics and the antifungals because your body probably has a buildup of both fungals and bacterial shit that you don't want in your body. And that's probably one of the reasons that's making you feel bad. Uh, when I was diagnosed, I had both bronchitis and pneumonia. And fortunately, the antibiotics... Uh, were helpful and a butyrol. Uh, and a butyrol, even if you don't have a pneumonia or asthma, uh, when you have a very low T cell count and you have AIDS, 
uh, it is you get congested very easily. Uh, I've been getting a lot less congested lately, but when I was like in that five to twenty T cell count range, like I would have onset within like five to ten minutes. I would go from clear chested to having serious congestion. Like it's like uh, it's it's crazy uh, how uh, when you're at that stage. Uh, you could feel the difference of, uh, um, like how fragile your body is and how quickly bacteria or whatever, uh, takes hold. It is like, it's like normal sickness, but just sped up like by a hundred times. And it makes sense because I had like 1% of the normal immune system, uh, levels. Uh, but anyway, abuterol. Uh, take that at first signs of congestion. Uh, provides, opens up your airways, helps provide immediate relief uh, for congestion. Uh, if you have allergies, it turned out that uh, our dog was caused to be seriously respiratory, serious respiratory allergies. Uh, so you got to do what you got to do if you have, uh, even if you didn't have severe cat or dog allergies prior to having AIDS, once your immune system is lower, what allergies you do have will be magnified. Uh, so you got to do what you got to do uh, during those time frames. Uh, and uh, if you can tolerate it with over the counter uh, anti allergy stuff, uh, flow days, and that sort of thing. Great. Uh, flow days is the main thing they recommended to me for other, uh, types of symptoms. But, yep. Yeah, uh, and, uh, so yeah, early stages, uh, prior to diagnosis and after diagnosis of AIDS you might have, uh, that I had is lots of fevers and, of course, uh, the best thing to immediately provide relief to a fever is Tylenol, uh, except this is a double-edged sword a little bit, and it's very unfortunate uh, because uh, the ingredient in Victarvi, that's not Victarvi, the ingredient in uh, Victarvi, uh, the Tenafor, interacts with the ibuprofen. Uh, however, the new formulation of TAF of the Tenafor is different than the older formulation of Tenafor. And that older formulation of Tenafor had a higher risk of uh, basically causing kidney failure, especially in combination with ibuprofen and as well as bone loss. Uh, and the new combination, uh, the new formulation of Tenafor uh, does not cause, uh, is magnitude safer in regards to kidney health and bone loss, but it's still recommended that you don't take ibuprofen with Victarvi. Uh, however, you may need to take an anti-inflammatory at points when you have a fever. Uh, uh, acetaminophen, Tylenol works, uh, for fevers, but the reason uh, I was a little bit wary about taking it and was unsure, well, should I take ibuprofen instead? Because they were at the hospital, they were giving me ibuprofen uh, instead of Tylenol, but maybe that was because I had the liver enzyme issue before with the Bactrim. Uh, and the thing is, is uh, ibuprofen isn't as hard on your liver. Uh, but apparently it interacts with uh, the antiretroviral, the Tenafor ingredient. Uh, so what I recommend is uh, take the take the Tylenol, but then also get yourself some of this uh, NAC. Uh, I'm going to talk more about supplements in other videos, but this is what they give to people who have Tylenol overdoses. Uh, this They give people this when you go to the hospital if you have a Tylenol overdose. Uh, so I figure if I take one of these, when I want, when I take one of these, it should limit uh, the, it, it should mitigate any uh, harshness on my liver because I already know 
Uh, my liver was having a hard time with the medications at first. Uh, the antiretrovirals, uh, you know, other medications you are, uh, requires your liver to work hard because you're metabolizing the ingredients. Uh, and uh, that is a lot of that has to do with your liver uh, and kidneys and stuff. Uh, so, uh, acetaminophen is processed by the liver. Bictarby is a uh, a lot uh, of that stuff has to be processed by the liver, so I was avoiding taking this, but uh, it's it's important to take once you get a fever, uh, and I think taking NAC with it uh, can help mitigate uh, potential negative side effects uh, from, uh, it also has free radical protection, free radicals, what causes cancer, and maintains cellular health, normal immune system function. Uh, NAC is a non-essential amino acid. Uh, and I'm going to talk more about amino acids and proteins and uh, omega-3s and all that sort of stuff. Uh, in uh, another video, I'm talking mostly about medications today. But this was just had to do with the Victory. I got into the subject of ibuprofen and the subject of Tylenol but if you're having bad liver issues and you have a healthy kidney it might actually be safer for you to take the ibuprofen uh, but otherwise you might want to take the Tylenol uh, but get yourself some NAC too and NAC uh, is also uh, it's, it is a sulfur containing amino acid that acts as a stabilizer for the pro formation of protein structures and promotes the formation of glutathione. Glutathione is a powerful free radical scavenging compound that also helps to maintain normal balance of the immune system. In addition, that can help support healthy uh, brain and neural, uh, neuronal tissues. Uh, but if it helps stabilize protein formation structures, that is a big part of cell growth. So I'm hoping that this stuff uh, will also be beneficial uh, for uh, helping increase my CD4 levels. Uh, but I think that's all the medications that I wanted to talk about uh, in this video. Medical pori. Medical pluricide, pluramide, known as Reglan, great for appetite, highly recommended. Uh, nice satin, good for thrush, but if you really have bacterial issues, you need fluxanol. And, yep. And if you're having a severe reaction to your Bactrim, make sure your liver enzymes are being checked at your next blood draw. Because uh, they, they check my enzymes and they notified me immediately when the results are back outside of work hours on the weekend. They texted me, were like, Pete, stop taking the Bactrim. Your liver enzymes are out of whack. And I knew it. Uh, I was having pain. Uh in uh, abdominal pain when I would take the Bactrim in addition to hives and it seriously felt like like something it didn't seem like it was uh, didn't seem like it was helping but uh, I am warning those that are just starting you don't want to miss a day of your anti uh, what the fuck uh, you want you don't want to miss a day of your uh, antiretroviral uh, because uh, staying regular with the antiretroviral is just very important and I know the side effects are very unpleasant when you first get started especially if you are in late stages of AIDS uh, but I am telling you it gets better and you're not going to feel like that for the rest of your life. Uh, I ha like Obviously, I'm not feeling 100% compared to a normal healthy person. Uh, but I feel a thousand times better than I did 
a month ago or a month and a half ago or especially two months ago like I can't explain uh, how unpleasant it was but uh, you might be tempted to stop taking the medications when you first get started on the medications if you're having those side effects like the lactic acid build up like the hives but uh, if you stop taking the medication and then you start it again uh, you're first off you're allowing the HIV to continue to grow and continue to kill off more CD4 cells and you're probably just going to extend the amount of time that you experience those side effects for if you don't just get through it at first so get through it at first and just take your medication every day especially uh, especially your antiretroviral and uh, at first you really need your antibiotics and antifungals uh, and I just got my pneumonia shot yesterday make sure you get your flu shot because uh, pneumonia or flu if you're below 50 T cells that you have AIDS uh, can very much uh, kill you and if you smoke cigarettes don't smoke cigarettes uh, doctors might not like me telling you this, but vapes, uh, regular vapes, Juul, whatever, is, it's nothing compared to a natural cigarette. Uh, that stuff doesn't bother me, but cigarettes really do. Uh, I haven't been smoking any cigarettes at all since my diagnosis, but leading up to my diagnosis, uh, don't smoke cigarettes, and, uh, honestly, <laughs> Alcohol seems to have a harder effect on your immune system than anything else uh, recreational uh, and uh, leading up to your diagnosis and after your diagnosis you may experience that but if you're an alcoholic you need to stop drinking alcohol because I'm telling you drinking even a little bit of alcohol and I noticed this even over the past few years uh, I would get sick much more easily after drinking alcohol and I didn't have these reactions uh, with weed or other substances uh, I specifically had this type of immune response to drinking alcohol uh, where I would have I would get sick get sinus infections after drinking alcohol uh, and both prior to your diagnosis and after your diagnosis you really, really got to uh, abstain from alcohol. McTarvey says you can drink twice a month. Uh, and, you know, that might be manageable when your CD4 counts are high. But if you have a really low CD4 count, like 5 or 10 or 20 or 50, uh, your diagnosis, if you're getting acclimated to the medications, you, I'm telling you, you are you will feel much better if you're not drinking and honestly when your immune system is that weak it's not even fun to drink uh, because it is uh, like uh, so hard on your body especially if you're taking the medications and all that sort of thing so abstain completely from alcohol and if you are dependent on alcohol when you are first diagnosed uh, Valium and other stuff can be prescribed to you uh, for alcohol withdrawals uh, and uh, like if you're under 100 T cells and you're diagnosed with AIDS uh, and you continue drinking alcohol regularly like you're gonna die like it's like uh, and you'll notice it you'll feel it in your body uh, people with just HIV I, I uh, like uh, those people that have HIV and they have a higher T cell count they're not in the age threshold at all and they are able to take their antiretroviral and drink recreationally normally like someone without HIV and uh, but I'm telling you uh, if you have an AIDS diagnosis uh, especially in the early stages like don't fuck around with that shit and even more, like, honestly, I don't even think, uh, I think the alcohol is harder on your immune system in those stages than even other types of recreational 
substances and that sort of thing. Although you should probably be abstaining from all sorts of that stuff uh, when you're first diagnosed. But I'm um, serious, at least for me, maybe it's just because I had that liver issue when I had the back trip. So maybe I just had a, maybe I have more of a reaction because my, uh, something with my liver enzymes or something so maybe it's more specific to me but i'm telling you uh at least in my experience uh in these past months in the past few years uh alcohol is the number one thing uh that seems to ha cause uh, the most immediate negative effect on my immune system and now i'm starting to feel better and i feel like if i wanted to i could occasionally drink uh without having uh severe side effects but really right now i'm just trying to get back uh out of the danger zones of my cd4 counts and stay up on my nutrition and medication and all that sort of thing so y'all anyway peace out I hope this was informative to some people, and if you're newly diagnosed, if you're newly diagnosed with HIV, don't fucking worry about it. You'll get over the side effects. You'll be fine. You'll live a long, healthy life. The medications are improving every year. They'll probably find a cure. Uh, if you're diagnosed with AIDS, uh, it is serious, uh, but if you stay stick to your uh, stick to your medication. Uh, and do your best to get as much calories in, and if you're having a difficulty time eating, uh, ensures boost protein powder, drinks, shakes, those sort of things. Uh, just do it, get that weight back on, and you'll start feeling better. And uh, don't miss the dose of your antiretroviral. Peace out.